Jesse Livmore. Life and Trading Rules. Jesse Livermore was born in West Acton, Massachusetts on July 26, 1877. In 1891, he begins to work in Payne Weber and Company's Boston stockbroking offices, transferring prices from ticker tape to quotation board. In 1892, he makes a $3.12 profit on this first trade, in Burlington stock. At age 15 Jesse accumulates his first $1,000 by trading stocks and commodities in bucket shops. Payne Weber and company instruct Jesse Livermore that he must either quit speculating in bucket shops or quit his job. He quits the job. At age 20 Jesse accumulates his first $10,000 by trading in bucket shops and moves to New York to trade on the New York Stock Exchange through legitimate stockbrokers. At age 21 his fortune has been reduced to $2,500. Livermore's trading is not always successful. At the age 22 he loses all funds via unsuccessful trading. He attributes this to slow execution of his trades. Borrows $500 and goes to St. Louis to trade in bucket shops. He returns to New York with $2,500, repays the $500 loan and resumes trading on both the exchange and in bucket shops. According to Livermore, I was not quite 23, all alone in New York with easy money in my pockets and the belief in my heart that I was beginning to understand the new machine. I was making allowances for the actual execution of my orders on the floor of the exchange, and moving more cautiously. But I was still sticking to the tape, that is, I was still ignoring general principles, and as long as I did that I could not spot the exact trouble with my game. On May 9, 1901, at the beginning of the day, Livermore's fortune stands at $50,000. At the end of a frantic day's trading, Livermore is broke. He says, the ticker beat me by lagging so far behind the market. The divergence between the printed and the actual prices undid me. In 1906 Jesse makes a profit of $250,000 shorting stocks on a hunch, that preceded the San Francisco earthquake. That summer he loses $40,000 acting on a tip from Ed Harding. On October 24, 1907, Livermore shorts the market during a crash and makes his first $1 million. In 1908, Livermore breaks his own trading rules, he takes advice from commodities expert Percy Thomas. Things go badly. Breaks his own trading rules again, increases his losing position in cotton and sells his winning position in wheat. Goes broke. Leaves New York and goes to Chicago where a trading house, aware of his ability, offers him limited finance for trading. Livermore is then summoned back to New York by Dan Williamson, owner of a stock exchange trading house. Williamson gives Livermore $25,000 to resume trading. After three weeks trading, Livermore has made a profit of $112,000. Williamson interferes with his trading, buying and selling on Livermore's behalf, and runs up losses. Livermore walks away from the relationship. In 1914, in several years of a flat market, with no money to be made, Livermore's debts grow to well over $1 million. He declares bankruptcy. In 1905, Livermore asks Dan Williamson for help. Williamson offers Livermore small facility of 500 shares to trade. Livermore reads the tape for six weeks before making a trade, he needs to be 100% sure the trade will be profitable. Livermore buys Bethlehem Steel on high margin at $98. Steel is rising because of demand from World War I. The price moves upward as he expects and, as the stock rises, he buys more at $115. The following day he sells at $145. He has achieved what he set out to achieve, he has a sizable stake again. In 1916, Livermore plays the market perfectly. He is long when the market is strongly bullish and then goes short when it turns bearish. He makes $3 million profit and goes to Palm Beach for the winter. In 1917 Livermore makes another $1.5 million profit and pays back all his debts from 1914. 
he buys $800,000 worth of annuities to ensure his family has a secure income should he ever be wiped out in the markets again. He also puts money into trusts for his wife and son. Nineteen twenty nine is Jesse Livermore's greatest moment as a trader. He goes short in the Great Crash of nineteen twenty nine and makes a profit of around one hundred million dollars. Nineteen thirty four, Jesse Livermore is bankrupt again. In nineteen thirty nine, Jesse Livermore writes How to Trade in Stocks, a book for people wishing to learn stock trading. In nineteen forty, How to Trade in Stocks is published. On November 28, 1940, Jesse Livermore dies by his own hand, via a revolver bullet through the brain. He had been suffering from depression and in his suicide note he describes his life as a failure. Jesse Livermore's Trading Rules and Greatest Quotes Men who can both be right and sit tight, are uncommon. I found it one of the hardest things to learn. There is a time to go, long. There is a time to go, short. And there is a time to go fishing. Markets are never wrong, opinions often are. Remember, stocks are never too high for you to begin buying or too low to begin selling. Whenever I have had the patience to wait for the market to arrive at what I call a pivotal point before I started to trade. I have always made money in my operations. When you know what not to do in order not to lose money, you begin to learn what to do in order to win. You begin to learn. Never buy a stock because it has had a big decline from its previous high. Never average losses. Only enter a trade after the action of the market confirms your opinion. And then enter promptly. A stock operator has to fight a lot of expensive enemies within himself. A man must know himself thoroughly, if he is going to make a good job out of trading in the speculative markets. It took me five years to learn to play the game intelligently enough to make big money when I was right. Remove hook from your trading lexicon. <laughs>